A question I get asked a lot is, how do I determine which area of the lake to target during the dog days of summer? Today, in this Catch 15 Challenge, I'm going to go over a simple process that I use to determine which area of the lake to target as we attempt to catch 15 pounds of bass in under 4 hours on a lake that I've not been to in 39 days. As I was getting into bass fishing, I struggled during the hot dog days of summer on catching good quality sized bass on bigger bodies of water. Looking back, I would run around the main lake way too much. I always got told and knew that bigger fish live in the main lake portions, but then I have learned there are good quality sized fish that live in other sections of the lake as well. As I got more experience, I learned to break down bigger lakes into sections. Then you break down these sections into smaller sections. When breaking down the sections, you can treat certain creek arms, areas as its own individual lake. Each area can be different, and if you pinpoint where you want to fish and break it down, you will have much more success in finding quality fish during the summer. I'm going to share how fishing smaller lakes has helped me fish bigger bodies of water. I've always had success on smaller lakes, but when I, I had a walleye moment one year, and then I took that to bigger lakes. Let me explain. For example, we have Lake Washita that's located in central Arkansas. This lake is 44,000 acres, but it has approximately 690 miles of shoreline and even over 200 islands. I think of this lake in three sections. You can have a lower end, a middle section, and then an upper section. With that, this still means that each section can be about 15,000 acres, if it's even divided evenly. There is still a lot of water. So then you break down these individual sections into many lakes. Each creek area can be its own small lake. This will help you save time for targeting bass any time of the year, but especially right now. For each area, you will have bass that also may be relying on different type of food sources. For example, your bass on the main lake areas can be related around bait fish, but can also eat crawfish and panfish. To where if you go into the back of creek, the bass that are there are what I call residential bass, and they are targeting panfish and crawfish. And that's because most of the bait fish has migrated out towards the main lake during the summer months. Knowing these little cues can lead you on how to target bass and help you find the best quality. You can also use this to your advantage as your fishing strength, whatever your strength is, or if there's something you want to work on to try to catch bass. I will use this on a smaller highland reservoir that we are fishing today. I'll keep the process the same if it's a lowland reservoir too. We have our main lake and upper end. Then we have the first half of creeks, and then we have the back half of creeks. When we got to the lake, we started graphing right away. I looked for different pieces of cover along the main lake that bass can use to target prey. I looked at both rock and brush piles, since in this lake that's the two primary covers that the bass will use. In this lake there is a good bait fish population, along with panfish and crawfish. There's also another sneaky prey that can be a factor on this lake. If you want to make a guess at that prey, leave a comment below. The first one that guesses it right will get a free bag of baits from me. After graphing the main lake for about 30 to 45 minutes, we fished two places. One of them had rock, and then one had brush. We did not have any success. At the rock spot, though, we did see a group of big fish. We stayed on the big group of fish for about 15 minutes. They did not want to cooperate, and there was no reason to try to stay any longer, as we had to try to go out and find other fish that were active and more easier to catch. Then, after filling at two main lake spots, we then decided to try out the first half of a creek. That's a good one. Yeah, I think. No, no, maybe not. Unless he's running at me. Let's get the net anyway. Get it anyways, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, oh. Good job. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That's a skinny fish, man. Dude, Look at that dork fish. So Why you gotta be skinny? All right, guys, welcome out here. But welcome back to Bass Fishing Declassified. Today we have a Catch 15 challenge, and I got one of my high school anglers right here, Houghton Howard, with the second fish of the day. His actual second fish. We've been out here just for an hour, done a little graphing, caught two fish, and man, this is a skinny poor fish. I want. I'm gonna let him weigh it real quick, and then we're gonna get back there in back there at it. 282. 282. Okay. 
282. Now, okay guys, that fish just weighed 282. We have two fish right now for 392. What we're on here is just, we, we've, we've graphed some of these high spots off of points that have brush piles. And we're right now just trying to, you know, where, where it's a typical summer pattern. We're either, we have both tried rock spots and brush. We've had two bites out of brush, trying to just eliminate, uh, just eliminate a process here. We're gonna go after rock or brush. Hawden, what, what did you just catch that fish on? I caught it on a uh, plum old monster zoom yeah the old the old faithful as we caught okay now hey let's go back in there and see if we can get another one near the mouth of this creek is a high spot off the point that has some man-made brush piles that are in 15 to 20 feet around the high spot the depth will go from 30 to 35 feet there's also some rock that is off this high spot and there's even a little bit of rock mixed up on the high spot on top of the spot what made us stop here was the presence of bait fish around the brush pile when I graphed over the pile, we saw fish in it, and then we saw fish relating to it as well. I did think I took a screenshot of the image from my graph, but after looking back at it, I did not. It was a great picture that I wish you guys could have seen. One other note about this spot is how it sets up on the outside of a spawning pocket. One reason why we decided to come back here to check this area is I was actually going to go look for brush piles near the pocket that may have had brim beds nearby. Instead, we came across this one, and we can see the bait fish, and we also saw the bait fish get attacked by bass coming out of the brush piles with our forward-facing sonar. What was interesting was we did try to throw swim baits and other bait fish style lures around the brush pile, but we never got a bite. For some reason, they wanted the big worm on this day. We ended up catching one more small keeper, and then started to start graphing. We did find some other groups of fish, but had no luck. Then we had a pop-up storm that had lightning and thunder in it, and it forced us to go back towards the boat ramp. Oh, buddy. Buddy or pal. This is all the rock. Now those are fish. Like, like those are fish. Fish. I'm saying this is the rock. The brush pile's more up there. I know I just threw a fit. Where are you at? Here, I'm going to go over here and throw. I'm going to go over here and just launch this dude. Got him? Yep. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a big one. It'll be a white bass. Nope. He's barely hooked. Yes! yes Boom! Sir. Boom! <laughs> Boom! Yeah. Just came up here. What we just did is I just graphed, and there's just a little bit of a row bed right here with a brush pile on top. We're running from the storms right now, guys. We're fishing the other end of the lake, and the storms kind of came through. I was like, hey, let's kind of get moved from the storms. Just got this pretty fish right here. This is the six cents it's in the net. Six cent C25, guys. So let's weigh this thing real quick. 405, 407. Wow, sweet. We now have four for 965. Man, we're just one fish away. I found this row bed from a recent trip in November. That day in November, I fished for two hours and graphed for three hours. I never fished the row bed until this day. The reason we did go here is because the storms did pop up and force us to the south end of the lake. Then as they moved out, I was looking at my waypoints and told myself, we need to go check this out. It was a good decision too because we caught one nice quality bass on it. Then after we fished this spot and did not get another bite, we decided to go back to where we caught our fish earlier to see if we can finish out our limit and get closer to 15 pounds. Yeah. There we go. Boom. Number five, guys. Number five, we came back. Like I said, after that storm just passed, we just came right back here to fish this little brush pile off this flat right here. There's a lot of bait in the area, a lot of fish. I don't think we're going to get to the 15 with the time we got. He's 205. 202. 1168. So the smallest one. It's a 110. 110. That's pretty good. I remember that. All right, let me get the drone up real quick. And we can go, we can go fish that other brush pile too. Uh-oh. Big biggin, big biggin. That's a biggin. That's a biggin. Can't you figure out the back one? 
but he's running at me, so I can't really do much. Oh, back off, Drake. Hey, just, just, yeah, just let him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Get in the boat. Get in the boat. What a disaster. Nice one there. Hey, yeah. Here we go. Awesome guys. Three, two, four. Awesome. Puts this out of like a 12. Here you go. I want to take 13, 8, 2. Ooh. One more fish. One more. That's all we're not. That's a big one. That's, we're getting 15 with this one. Oh my gosh. Come on. Boom. Boom. 15 pounds. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, so hot. <laughs> You all right? Yeah, I'm good. You all right? It's so hot. Oh, the net? Oh, okay. Your hands all right? Yeah, I'm good. Boom! Oh. <laughs> you burn your... Oh, my... Heck yeah. Oh, Three... he has blood all over you. Oh, sweet. 1609. Yes, sir. We're heading <laughs> to the house. Heading to the house. Heck yeah. Thank you, fish. How about they're biting right now, though? Oh, yeah. Like, like if we kept fishing this, we might have 20, but oh, let's we not. Can no doubt get 20. We're, we're, we're going home. Now, for teaching purposes, let's say we did not catch any fish out of this brush pile. What would you do next, Jimmy? Well, for me, guys, I love to fish Main Lake in the first half of creeks. The back half of creek is a good pattern and is a good way to catch bass, of course, when it does get hot, even in August and September, but it's not specifically my strength. Now, if you like to fish more shallower and you like to throw top waters and you even want to, you know, you can still catch them on a big worm. In the more back half of creeks, your fish right now are going to be relating to more than bram and, and uh, crawfish, as I said earlier. Even at Lake Washita, when one of the forest wood cups was worn, was way in the back half of a creek where the angler won by fishing brush piles, but there were brim beds nearby and he was fishing residential fish. For me and my style, though, I love to fish main lake. And, and to stay more in that section of the lake. So if we didn't catch a fish at that brush pile, we would have checked another creek in the first half and then maybe went back to the main lake. But as you guys did, as you guys saw, I went main lake for two spots and then I went to the first half of creek and then that was just right then our checklist I went by. We found a group of fish and then we got after them. Luckily, the storms did move out to where we could get a couple more, uh, a couple more hours of, or an hour of fishing in and it didn't ruin our day. Hart, what a day we just had on the water, man. I mean, we just we just had a blast. Guys, we just left them fish biting. We got to go get home, go get showered up, and get ready to go to church. But, guys, just so you know, we just did this challenge in four hours. We got out here to this lake at about 12 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock right now, and they're biting right now. And just to talk more about, you know, just this day, we're just going to share a couple things about the, about the day. This lake, uh, I've not been to in a month, and it's been two months for you, right? Two plus. Yeah, two plus. Now, he's caught a lot of fish out here. And but what we did today was we didn't fish, okay, a lot of the areas that we have caught fish at before. And it was hard for me because there's an area I know right now where some bigs are at. But what, but with this, we try to make us ourselves better anglers. And there's some stuff even on footage today that we found and graphed and couldn't catch fish at that I'm like, man, there's something there. But guys, that brush pile that we caught off is, is a typical summer pattern, a great summer pattern to hopefully help you learn to go out and catch fish. So what we had with it again, you know, it's just a brush pile out in front of a spawning flat. Uh, it's out there off the point in the middle of a creek. And what better way to catch them with a big worm? And my man Houghton here actually outfished me with the big worm today. I'm going to let Houghton share and him talk about his big worm setup real quick. So Houghton, now what are you throwing that worm on? So to start off, I have a worm and jig, seven, two, uh, seven foot, two inch rod. Heavy? Oh, uh, now is that, well, what brand is that? It's a Denali rod. Oh, it's a Denali. He's got him a covert light right here. There we go. Denali covert light. These are really nice. Yeah, and uh, and then what, um, and you're using a, is it, what's that, an older Shimano Corrado? Yep. Older I'm Shimano, sure. good. Really older sure. Shimano Corrado, and that's a five aught hook. And, I uh, believe, I don't know. Yeah, it's a five aught hook. <laughs> now, the, or, now the worm, uh, what worm are you throwing? I'm throwing the Zoom Old Monster 10.5 inch. Uh, it was plum 
I yeah, believe. it's a plum color. I was throwing it, guys, today on the red uh, or plum apple, okay? I was just throwing it just a little different. I didn't think, uh, just looking back at thinking back on the trip, he got more bites than I did with it. But I know there at the end, I got those two better fish. But plum apple is great when that water gets in the 90s. Uh, and, and that temp today was about 88. And so it's hot water, hot, hot. But this fishing trip... Just so you guys can learn, uh, like when is when these are the dog days of summer, you will go through hours of not getting by hours as we did. Now we did catch that one big one that was in another creek when we were running away from the storms. But guys, as you just saw, when it goes down, it goes down. And man, what a better way to do it with someone else in the boat today? I saw right here one of my guys on the fishing team, Halton Howard. He's gonna be a future stick. Hopefully, I don't know if he what he wants to do one day with it. He's just gonna fish or what you gonna do? Uh, but man, I enjoyed having you in the boat today. Thanks for yes, coming. Sir. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah, anything else you want to share or talk about about the day? Not really. Not really? Okay. He, he, hey, this guy was taught well. He don't like to share secrets, okay? Let us guys know if you enjoyed today's video and if you enjoyed me having a guest in the boat. If you want Halton to come back, leave a comment saying you want Halton to come back. If you'd like me to have some other friends, just let me know. I have some ideas for us for, for me to have some other guests in the boat during these Catch 15s. If you like that, just let me know. And guys, uh, I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to Bass Fishing Declassified if you have had not. And hey, we will see you on the next one. Okay, guys, I'm going to announce the winner from my recent solo video that was over the unique fishing tips that have been on this channel, Bass Fishing Declassified. But first, guys, I'm going to share with you something new that I've started, and that's a podcast. I'm going to be the host of a podcast called Real Life in Fishing. I remember one of my kids, man, back that I taught years ago, told me, hey, coach, you need to be a host of a podcast. So I finally have bit the bullet. We have jumped into it. Hey, we're going to get in these people's uh, stories on life. We're also going to talk a little bit about fishing. Hey, check it out. The first episode has been released today. Guys, I'm about to announce the winner from the comments on the recent fishing tips video i just also realized I, my video that i recorded of that didn't save or i didn't hit record or it got deleted uh error on my part so i'm just going to record it right here but first of all real quick guys thank you for everybody for the comments we appreciate the words appreciate the support of the bass fishing declassified channel hey the winner of the comments going to be right here okay how you can get your bag of baits is by emailing me which i'm going to put my email right there on the screen as well but email me at jimmy dot e dot fishing at gmail.com hey appreciate it once again guys make sure you send me the email and we'll see you on the next one